Hey, I'm Kurt Rosenwinkel, and you're listening to In Time. Winkles, a jazz guitarist originally from Philadelphia, USA, now residing in Berlin and currently teaching at jazz, currently teaching jazz at one of the leading universities in Europe. Uh, so I, <laughs> I was, is that, uh, is that not the case anymore? No, yeah, not, not anymore. I, uh, I retired in 2016. Ah, right. Okay. I'm working on um, ad, ad the information. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, that, that uh, jazz school, I'm not sure how to pronounce it anyway so i suppose i've had to put it there yeah but <laughs> yeah <laughs> um it, it, i mean really you're still in berlin now right called the jazz institute berlin <laughs> ah right okay that makes it easier yeah. uh but you, st you still live in berlin now right yeah i'm still in berlin and uh I, I left the school in 2016 and started my record label hardcore records I wanted to reallocate my energy to uh, making music uh, rather than teaching. I'd been teaching for a long time and, you know, kind of like doing half and half teaching and my uh, career and as an artist. And, you know, eventually I just felt like uh, the two couldn't coexist anymore. So I had to just go full on uh, the other path, you know, the, the main path. Yeah, so I mean, with, with uh, hardcore, what was like the triggering point with that? And did you just sort of did something flick with you? Or was it something you always wanted to do? Actually, I um, uh, I never wanted to make a record company. I I had never thought about it before in my life. It was only when I realized that these uh, these arcs of life phrases. Uh, were all like a whole bunch of them were resolving at the same point and every once in a while in a person's life like that that'll happen you know where like many things culminate at the same time and then you realize that you know your whole life uh, is going to change you know so that was one of those moments and um, you know I realized that I had to make some big changes so I uh, I, uh, I quit I, I quit the school and uh, I left my uh, manager, who I was working with at the, at the time. I'd been working with him for about 13 years, and he was my record company, and uh, and my booking agent and manager. And I just felt like I needed to uh, to refresh and restart and just re recalibrate all of the essential pillars in in my life. And one night I was uh, and and I I had an album that I wanted to finish and to put out it was an important album of mine uh for me uh just artistically it's called kaibi and i had been working on that for a long time and i wanted to have it released in in the best way possible and i kind of realized that you know even though i had some good responses from record companies i kind of felt like it needed more than than even they could really give it you know um and then I just woke up in the middle of the night one night and uh, walked out onto the balcony. I was at my girlfriend's parents' house and I looked up at the moon and the moon was like, start a record company. And I was like, start a record company? She was like, yeah, start a record company. <laughs> And I was like, really? I was like, yeah. I was like, okay. So I started a record company. And that was great. That turned out to be an amazing thing to do, you know, because uh, I gave my own music the 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 platform that uh, that it deserved and that I could put just all of my own resources into that. 
and then but also um you know then when you have a record company then you then you think oh man i'd love to do this album with these guys and that album with those guys and you know i want to do a, a comedy album and you just start thinking about things that you want to do and things that you see and artists that you hear i remember i was in uh i was in beige i was in shanghai uh china and after our show we were upstairs uh <coughs> hanging out in in like the uh the backstage area that was really comfortable with like lots of couches and pretty big space and then it turned into this big hang and this big party and this guy picked up the guitar and he started jamming the blues just really uh kind of aggressive you know but at and that was really cool but then he started singing like chinese opera over the blues and then all the people knew the opera because it was traditional opera chinese opera and everybody started singing along while he's like hitting like delta blues stuff and then everybody's singing together chinese opera and i was like that's hardcore you know i want to sign that you know so we 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 uh you know, we talked. <laughs> uh, we only got a certain distance forward, though. But um, but that's just an example of like you know how cool it is to you know have a record company and 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 uh, think of things that you want to do. And since then, we've done so many great uh, projects with uh, you know great artists that I'm really proud to be able to offer a platform for them to to get their music out and uh, one artist is uh, the great pedro martins who's a incredible uh talent um extremely gifted and uh beautiful uh artist he's a guitarist um a songwriter composer singer multi-instrumentalist like badass on drums, keyboards, guitar, singing, bass. He just plays the shit out of everything. And uh um he and I were working on on my album Kai Beat together at the end of the production period and then also I produced his album. So for Hardcore, his album came out and it's a beautiful album. It's called Vox. It came out a couple of years ago and uh it's called vox it's really an incredible record in my opinion a classic um but uh you know so we did that he's working on his second album uh i we also signed uh daniel santiago who is a, a friend of of pedro's who's also a great guitarist uh singer and songwriter and we just finished we just got the masters actually for for his album and that's this album is really great album so psyched about that uh we just finished mixing a, a, another album of a great guitarist here in berlin that i've always really loved uh i would always hear him at jam sessions uh, around berlin and um i over the over the lockdown period he was putting out these really beautiful uh videos of him and his trio and so i called him up and i asked him if he would want to record for for hardcore and 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 so we did so he made a record and it's just being mastered now so that's really cool um yeah i mean i could go on but uh we're working on tons of stuff no, I mean it's really, yeah, it's, re it's really interesting to hear you talk about it like that. Like you mentioned, um, that player that you met that blew you away and was completely unique. Um, in terms of signing new artists, how do you go about it? Is there like a, a checklist that every player or every artist needs to uh, fulfill in order to be eligible for the uh, record label, or is it just different for every person? Yeah, it's it's different for every person. I I think you know, I mean, some people are for further along in the kind of career stuff i mean some people don't even have a website other people's other people have a manager that stuff is not so important it, although it is i mean but in the the most important thing is is uh just the the music itself you know um if it if it uh if it just kind of has that thing that that you feel like is is uh 
is is got that that magic got that that combination of of heart and soul and craft and imagination and wisdom and depth and you know all the all the things that we we get from from great music um if it touches if it touches me um you know i i'm i'm uh i love to uh to try to make something happen for it you know if it you know and so yeah i'm just I just want to help music out that I love, you know, that I hear, you know. And so, uh, you know, we're we're a small label, so we don't have an infinite budget or, or anything like that. I mean, um, you know, we're starting to become self-sufficient now. But for the first four years, you know, it's like it's like any business, like you start a restaurant and, you know, you don't recoup or you know, go into the black for, for a period of time. And I think that's the same for for a record company, especially in these days where <laughs> it's a kind of a desolated landscape out there for, uh, for wanting to do this. But, you know, the good part about that is that, you know, I consider it a success if we're able to just produce the albums and to make that music live, you know, to make it manifest in this world. That's the success for me. And I trust in the longevity of uh of the life of great music you know if you have something if you have a great album even though we're traveling through these times right now where it might be something you know dicey prospects financially to have a record company where nobody's paying for for the music i mean some people are but um on the whole you know it's it's, it's a uh challenge of of getting the returns back so to move forward as a company I I see that as a temporary uh moment in the industry that we have to get through and uh so I'm focusing on building the uh the the uh the equity uh moving forward the catalog of great music building up this you know amazing network of like-minded artists and and uh people around the world who are responding to the real um karmic uh wavelength of what we're doing at at hardcore and becoming part of a kind of a new brand in in music that can stand the test of time and do you think just like comparing the position you're in now and what you're able to um provide say for uh, these newer artists like pedro and daniel santiago um compared to your um more formative years uh, say like early new york you did some records for crisscross and i think you self produced enemies of energy um do you feel that like that experience has like spurred you on to create this space for uh i'm still here just... okay and um, spurred you on to... <laughs> <laughs> to create um this space for say um younger players like Pedro um, to be able to kind of go, um, I guess, like from a young age into a position to make an album like Box with that freedom and that support um, without the kind of, I mean, like this is an assumption on my half, behalf, but like looking back at a lot of like the early kind of crisscross uh, roster from like Seamus Blake, the early uh, Mark Turner's early stuff and all that. So it's like kind of a lot of gut, like cats had to do that to pay their dues to then get the kind of backing from a bigger label, say to like do a more creative project. Do you feel that like you're kind of like having gone through that, you that might have urged you on in a way to kind of create this space? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, when I was coming up and starting to to make records for for those labels, I made one for Fresh Sound, made one for Criss Cross, and then was signed by Impulse and then went over to Verve uh, and then was at uh, World Word of Mouth Music, which was my uh, manager's label. Mm -hmm. um those were all really different experiences and uh um they were all really valuable uh the crisscross date you know they always have 
just you know one one session in one day and that's the album um so that's a you know that's a that's a uh uh, a rigorous kind of approach to making a, a record and i've done a lot of records like that from playing with uh as a sideman like with uh, paul motion and gary burton and uh, <clears throat> brian blade maybe we'd have a couple days in the studio um and you know that's all great and that that works if you have a, a particular uh band that's already really you know got got their their thing down then you can just kind of go in the studio and 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 play and and then that's the album like my last album uh angels around was just a trio record and we we just came to to my studio here and plugged in and and hit for two days and and that was the that was the album uh you know there's lots of different ways to make music and uh you know when i went to verve i um uh the yeah the the first album they put out was a, an album that I made by myself and that that album you know we had like maybe 5 days tracking and a week mixing it seems like you know whenever you do it yourself you you find a way to to give yourself more uh you know you 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 put all your resources in into it because it's a labor of love you know so you end up maybe uh you know putting more into it than you than you could if you're on a label so i think you know with with hardcore i just want to do uh justice to the music and uh that might mean mixing for a month you know <laughs> and and when you know with hardcore you know we have people all around the world who who want to do it for the sake of the music because that's what we're all doing i mean that's what i'm doing with the label that's what uh everybody is doing who's involved with it all the musicians all everybody who's working for the label we're doing it for the music so we tend to find uh the resources to to help us um you know to to do it in the way that we have to whether it's this way or that way uh all for the for the music for the good of the music I think, um, I mean, it's great to hear this. I mean, um, this is like a, a common issue is that I guess a lot of the industry is not about the music, especially on like a deeper inset level. So, um, I mean, a lot of, I mean, even in the UK, we have some jazz labels, we have whirlwinds like Mike Yanish's label and, um, there's a label in Birmingham as well. And like, they're kind of, they're pretty cool. They, you know, like they, they let people do what they want to do, but then there's still like, there is an element of like uh, control that always comes in from some kind of executive level, which I, um, I kind of feel always kind of hampers the actual creation of music for the sake of creation of music. Um, uh, and it seems like you're kind of like, going a, you may be one of the few labels in jazz at the moment well improvised music and maybe not completely improvised music that seems to be like fully committed to music first uh and then like everything else can be sorted out as, like after um but that's quite like rare i think in this day and age like do you feel it from an industry sense of view especially having to deal with like distributors and like different aspects aspects of publishing that you're like standing out do you find that anyone reacts to you in a way of like oh you know like this is not what we're used to uh yeah i don't know i think i think what um what what we want to do is just make the music uh as best we can so that uh even if it's an, an unknown artist like maybe uh pay or lesser known artists developing artists you know like like pedro and and uh and daniel you know we just want to make the music so enjoyable and so uh so as good as we can so that when when we we put it out there you know the music does the job you know the music will 
will will live its own life and people will hear it and they'll say oh that's that's really cool like you should check that out and you know hopefully we get uh help from the industry and i know a lot of people in the industry from from my own career and and uh so you know we can get the attention of uh some writers and you know some some people in the industry some publicity people and uh but mostly it's just word of mouth and you know people sharing things on the internet and so we're we're hitting all those avenues and we we do have worldwide distribution so um i mean i think my albums sell you know they'll they kind of they're known quantities i have an audience a uh, worldwide audience so you know we can kind of um you know hit hit those albums and that'll be something that we can uh that we can profit from and these other albums you know we just try to get them out there as much as possible so that people get hip to these great artists and um you know uh sometimes it's it's a it's a a long uh way you know and sometimes it's it's you know shoot up and you have a hit you know so there's no there's no saying that we won't have like a huge hit on the next <laughs> album so i actually i think this next album is gonna be a, uh you know just off the charts just you know number one on on all the the lists <laughs> that's perfect i guess yeah. uh one uh one big thing that's uh changed for you then in the last four years is that you've sort of switched roles and being uh in which like you know in the studio uh how have you found it adjusting in terms of you know not necessarily well trying not to give the direction and how you want the music to sound or um and yeah probably not even playing a if that's the case. yeah as a producer I, I love being a producer um because uh you know if there's if there's somebody's music who who i feel like i understand then i i love to be the producer so that there isn't some other person fucking it up <laughs> you know um so i can just let the just guide the music through its own process so that it can be really what it what it what it really wants to be you know so um in that in that regard i'm involved with the the production of the music and you know i'll play uh, this or that on the album so, a solo here a part here it's all very collaborative like this album with daniel is just absolutely uh such a cool record and it came about by um uh actually um Pedro Martins and and Daniel Santiago they flew from Brazil over here to Berlin and uh I originally we all had thought that they would do a a duo album just two guitars and as they they got here and we started checking out the sounds and checking out the songs and I was like okay so what songs you guys have and you know they played them and and I was like yeah that's that's great let's do it you know and and then at a certain point i think daniel said like this would be cool if it had some drums on it <laughs> and i was like oh, oh okay so you want to go there and and then it just as soon as we and then so it we we kind of like lost the idea of just being a duo album and then all of a sudden we were like okay okay it's on let's just use the the studio as a creative tool and then we were all just playing everything bass and drums and and uh keyboards and singing and uh percussion and the three of us just spent like uh about about 10 days and did a song every day one song every day and um and it was this process that became uh super collaborative and uh, the end result is got this really cool chemistry between the three of us and so you know as a producer um i'm involved in the the uh the, the production of the albums and you know maybe that's like that like really really hands-on but then maybe it's also like like i did with the johan this guitarist from berlin you know he's i love the way he, he has his thing and i just want to make that 
make a nice atmosphere for for that and and that's that's it that's all i have to do and uh so each project is different you know we did a we did a um an album of a tremendous pianist named elu uh, eric lewis um and he's an incredible incredible phenomenal pianist virtuoso just tremendous pianist um he's like a piano colossus you know and he uh made an album of solo solo piano uh versions of uh my songs so that was another interesting uh project because we were closely collaborating but i was uh merely just kind of a sounding board for his own development through my compositions and it was um a really cool collaborative process that way that was totally different i didn't play anything uh and i would just give you know notes about the about the compositions and i would just be there as a producer to to kind of provide this sort of framework for him to really uh travel through these songs and be experimental and develop his own uh voice with these with these pieces which he did which is amazing and so that that's an album that we did as well called elu plays rosenwinkel cubism is, is, is another name for it so another uh another project that you've uh been working on in the last couple of years is um osmosis a uh it's a bit of a departure from your typical standards um what like how did that come about what was the idea behind it how did you round up the people for it uh yeah yeah osmosis is a band i'm in with omar hakim and uh rachel z and lindley marth on bass and that came about um because uh i went over to omar and rachel's house um and we just had a jam session and uh and it really clicked and the chemistry was super cool and they wanted to start this band uh and then that kind of became the nucleus for the band and uh and then Lindley came in and then it was like really uh set you know the 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 cast of characters and <laughs> and we just have a ball we just go out and jam the f out you know and it's so much fun because it's uh rocking i mean when you play with omar hakim man everything it just feels so good so exciting and and so hitting and so on the edge of life you know just right there man and it's it's such an exhilarating feeling for for us in the band and and for the audience as well and so it's it's super powerful uh band and we just go out there and we just we just throw down you know and it's fun for me because it's like kind of more maybe you would say like on a fusion kind of direction and but going all kinds of different ways as well you know from like uh you know like kind of straight up fusion to like you know uh improvisational bitches brew elements you know to kind of uh funk just straight up funk and it's great man we have a great time it's a big party and and we we're we're just laughing our asses off all 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 during the tour you know it's just we have a lot of fun that's a great band um i saw when you uh when you played with that band at nam um you had thad on bass yeah uh how, that, that's a really good friend of mine we played together a bunch and that i is, saw that is, oh that, my god yeah. that's playing with kurt that is killing <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, yeah, I mean, Lindley, Lindley is like, you know, in, in the band and Thad is also in with us, you know, when, when Lindley can't make it, Thad's right there and he's right in like Flynn and he's killing, man. Uh, yeah, Sick. Thad is all right. Man. Yeah, he's, he's, he's hilarious. Funny guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, There was something, what was that? Uh, I saw on the 
there was on your Twitter you put something um, playing with uh, JD Beck and Dummy. You were yeah. playing. You put on. Can you talk about that, or is it like? Yeah, yeah. No go. I think okay, I cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, um, you know, they're they're of course awesome, and you know, we all love them and uh what they're doing and it was so, so cool that they're doing an actual album now and and jd asked me those guys asked me if i want to to play on one song so um <laughs> so they sent me the tune when when they sent me the song it was called dumb fucking song <laughs> <laughs> wow. and uh <laughs> So, you know, yeah, so I just I just threw threw down on that track and it came out really cool. I, I'm psyched for for that to come out and I'm also psyched to just hear their album and I'm super happy to be a part of it, man, because those guys are really great and yeah, uh, I love what they're doing. Those guys are unreal. We had them on a few months ago on the show um, and half of it was brilliant and half of it was just utter nonsense. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? They're crazy yeah. guys. Obviously, they're some of the most incredible up-and-coming musicians is there anyone else that you know of that we should all keep our eyes out for uh yeah um you know well i mean uh, you know i don't know how up and coming you could say he is but i mean lewis coles is yeah. i mean i love lewis coles music i think yeah I mean, he's pretty well known you know so uh but uh, i just love his his work he's a great artist um beyond being just a terrifying drummer you know he's a uh, writes beautiful beautiful music you know and really love him as an artist love his his music um yeah there's there's a lot of young creative people uh making a mark now uh you know i think i think emmanuel wilkins album uh that came out this year is absolutely brilliant and is represents a uh, kind of state of the art of of uh playing uh you know jazz modern jazz context i mean they just really made a statement with that album i think it's fantastic i, I forget the name of the album but it's it's emmanuel wilkins album and uh let's see um actually you know ben wendell's album i don't know if you know who ben wendell is was a great saxophonist um played with knee body and uh he came out with another album uh this year that is really killing man it's killing and so that was really cool to to hear so those two have been little standouts for me this year um yeah let's see uh you know i mean also uh um pedro martins is is a incredible artist that you know everybody should keep an eye on he's doing really great stuff he's working on his second album as i mentioned before and uh so but he's also um uh working a lot with genevieve artati who's uh, also a really great artist who everybody should be checking out she just had uh an album released on uh on um uh, brain feeder records which is a great label uh in la they're they've got their finger on the pulse of a lot of great great music uh and so i was really happy genevieve was signed to them and they she just released her record on brain feeder and it's a great record and uh so i think you know, people should be aware of her, Genevieve Artadi. She's fantastic. Yeah. I guess uh, something that uh, a lot of, you know, a lot of contemporary musicians or modern musicians have to do in order to develop their sound is look back on their inspirations. I want to sort of bring it back. So our first guest we had this year was Mark Letiri, um, Fearless Flyers, uh, Snarky Puppy of mm -hmm. uh, fame. Uh, but one of the th one of the, he actually uh, posed a question back to us about you know can you play in the same room as as the person that inspired you to play as in w without sounding like them? Um, so I've read from like previous uh, interviews you've done where you know you you cite uh, 
inspirations from like uh, John Coltrane, all the greats, John Coltrane, uh, Bill Evans, Steele and East Monk, um, so much more. Uh, what do you reckon about that thought, like about being able to play in the same room as, say, your greatest serial in wooden music? Oh, um, well, I've had the opportunity to play in the same room with one of my, with several of my heroes, actually. Um, uh, you know, I, I played, uh, I played in Paul Motion's band for on and off for about 10 years. And that was definitely playing in the same room with one of my heroes, uh, you know, drummer. If you don't know Paul Motion, check out his music. It's incredible. Uh, the on Broadway stuff in particular is really incredible music. Um, also, I played with Joe Henderson and his band, and that was just an absolute um, uh, incredible experience for me uh, to be that close to one of my all time uh, legend heroes. You know, he. You know, uh, man, I owe so much to him in my music and, you know, to and and all of the music owes so much to hi to his music, you know, and to to be standing next to him right before we're about to go on at the Atlanta Jazz Festival and to hear him warming up the horn from from the low register to the high, just exercising all the registers and hearing that sound you know, right next to me, it's like, it's like karmic chiropractor, you know, it's just, it just puts the whole attitude in to cosmic perspective, you know, and uh, it's just aligning, you know, uh, to, to hear that and something, just to hear that right next to me and just be standing next to him and then go on stage and, and play with him was just one of the most incredible experiences. I did I did a European tour with him and a week at, at the Iridium in New York City and Chicago Jazz Festival and uh, Atlanta Jazz Festival. Um, so, so that was really in incredible to, you know, to go to the rehearsal <laughs> and... Uh, play all those songs that I love, you know, and are so important, you know, to the whole history and to play them with, with Joe <laughs> was just a, such a trip, man. It's incredible. So that was my experience. I guess, uh, how'd you find it then? I mean, you've got so much content out there now that, uh, or, you know, your discography is so well developed now that there are people drawing inspiration from your playing and your uh, style as well do you find it easily identifiable when you're listening to someone and you can hear a bit of yourself in it uh i guess so yeah um some more than more than others you know but uh yeah i can i can definitely tell um you know uh mm-hmm No, that's fair enough. I mean, um, with uh, with hardcore, what what are the sort of plans you've got at the moment going forward? Oh well, um, we've got a lot of things going on. As as I mentioned and talked about before, we've got Daniel Santiago's album coming out, uh, and um, let's see, we've got um, an album of mine that I'm mixing right now it's a uh it's a solo piano album actually where I'm just playing piano and uh so that's being mixed and uh we're working also on an album of mine called The Knower Abstracts which is an album of of mine kind of a solo album where I'm playing all the instruments and uh and it's also featuring uh, um, Michela Bokova on voice, and so it's kind of me playing everything, and uh, and then Michela doing a lot of vo vocal stuff. And this album came about because uh, several years ago I was doing a lot of solo performances, and I was kind of getting bored of 
just playing 90 minutes of solo guitar. So I started introducing loops. And then that started to get more and more involved. And then I had a keyboard and I was programming uh, um, uh, code to interact with Ableton Live. And I was making these kind of uh, song forms, uh, improvising songs live, basically. And uh, so I'd, I'd come up with a, a vamp up for an A section and then and then a, I'd have this big foot pedal all programmed to do different things to kind of choose instruments and record them and layer and multi-track and then do uh, a, a section, B section, C section, and then blow on top of it and sing. And I was doing this and I had this whole setup and I was traveling and doing tours and uh, making these solo concerts. And then I was improvising on stage doing using this system that I made and and then simultaneously recording it multi-track and um I stopped doing it because <laughs> it was just so intense I you know I was didn't really have any support uh technical support on the road so I was setting everything up I was doing everything myself and it was like a lot of equipment and a lot of technical stuff and it just was, was just overwhelming. <laughs> so, but I ended up with a whole bunch of recordings of these songs that I had written on stage. And, and so this album is a kind of like, I take, I, I've taken those songs and, and now I'm producing them for this album, which is called The Knower Abstracts. So I'm working on that. Um, <laughs> and um, I'm going to definitely do a, uh, a solo guitar album. I just did a performance for Dream Stage last night. Um, Dream Stage is this cool live music platform, live streaming music tr platform. Uh, and uh, uh, Eric Clapton actually got me hooked up with them uh, because he's friends with the, the 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 creator of this platform, this uh, excellent cellist uh, from from Germany named Jans uh, Vogler, and so I did that. And because it was called Dream Stage, I. I thought about maybe making uh, a performance about dreams. And so I kind of created this whole performance uh, dedicated to dreams. And I did that last night. Um, or maybe it was two nights ago. I don't remember. <laughs> I guess it was last night. Yeah. No. It was the night before. Tuesday. What day is it? <laughs> it's Wednesday today, I think. Thursday. Is it it's Thursday? <laughs> oh, we got it all wrong. Thursday. Um, how are you finding um, the live stream experience? Uh, I've I've had um, like it's something that I'm like kind of I'm very since the pandemic. It's been a kind of crash course for me had yeah. to move a bunch of things online um Same. i've had mixed success some really kind of didn't work at all and people because i feel that once you start like once you start playing i can't pay attention then there's always this worry i have of technology some right. for some reason so people right. may be on a stream being like i can't hear oh i can just i can't see anything and like it, it's quite hard like how do you feel in so i mean like do you kind of just think i mean have you had any issues with the streaming experience or is it has it all kind of been luckily plain sailing oh well yeah no we've had we've definitely had issues and and i was in the same boat i mean when this all went down you know like i mean i i didn't have any like uh internet uh audio visual camera stuff uh set up uh worked out at all you know i was like um the first <laughs> the first stream i did was like 
it was I, it was my iPhone on a little stand, and it was like backwards and upside down, and it was all, <laughs> and it was totally jacked up. And uh, you know, I was like, I was like, okay, man, we got to get into this shit like, like real fast, you know. I mean, and it it was like it was an uphill battle. I mean, I was like, okay, let's just buy this camera. All right, we need the camera. Okay, now, how are we gonna get it into the computer? You know, and it's like you just plug it into the computer, and then and then it's like, no, no, you can't do that. <laughs> like, it's not gonna work. And it was just like what the hell okay we'll just make videos and then then send them but then like oh that's you can only record 10 minutes at a time and all this uphill battle with <laughs> with the learning curve on that shit and but we got real good real fast man and uh and it and it's and it's proving to be so much fun man i, I love it i love like you know shit man now we're in detention <laughs> <laughs> that's what i do in my master class you know and we've been doing these master classes which have been so awesome and you know i can just like i love this stuff man i just did dreams all kinds of dreams man you know and you know you just groove with the shit you know and i one thing that we started doing which was really cool is we started doing these these master classes and not only were they just you know, I've done thousands of master classes just going to a school and and you know, playing and talking, you know, and Q and A. You know, usually what I would do was my standard thing for master classes has always been like play a couple tunes and just have a Q and A, have a kind of a dialogue, you know, with the audience for the rest of the time and then maybe play a little bit demonstrating something in the middle and then play a tune at the end and then you know, then you're out. But um, when we started doing the master classes here, you know, having all of this technology and uh, other dimensions available to us, you know, I started to think about, you know, how to really present, to present uh, a lot of interesting topics uh, that I have a lot of, of thought on, um, in in an interesting way that could be more captivating and more immersive and more uh involved and and more curated in a way you know and so you know we we did uh master class volume two in october and that was about composition and we had all kinds of stuff you know and the the thing that made the biggest difference was the switcher you know the uh the switcher doing you know you can control the cameras you can put you can put me you know down there you know you know you can do all, <laughs> all this stuff <laughs> you know like that and uh and uh whoa what's going on yeah like adult adult swim live <laughs> kind of yeah exactly yeah exactly you know and you can have fun, you know, we have fun with it, make some movies, you know, uh, you know, just, 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 just have a laugh, you know, and we've been doing these advertisements and they've just been fucking fun. Just, just kind of just goofing off and, you know, rapping and, and just going, going nuts, you know, and having fun with it. So, um, you know, it's been really great on, on the very serious thing and making a, uh, 360, degree presentation so in these master classes i would do two hours of a presentation and for the composition one i wrote a 40 page uh, book and and then we had and then we went through like 16 of my songs and um i wrote about about all the processes that i of composition that i that were relevant to those songs and it was really deep um to go through myself to, to kind of really see what I would want to put out there that would be helpful and interesting to to people, you know, and then to really produce it in a in a way that that is that can be entertaining for for people during this time, you know, 
so I think we really have been able to do that. And the last masterclass we did um, was about guitar and deep dive into the guitar and and improvisation. And uh, we just we recorded we did all the master classes and then uh normally what we would do is take the recorded video and we would edit it and put that out for the general public uh and sell it as just the the, the presentation which usually is two hours but what happened was the zoom quality was so bad because they changed their settings without telling anybody all of a sudden when you record the Zoom call now, now it's like really bad quality, and we couldn't use it, you know. So, I recorded the the video again, um, you know, just on its own without an audience, and and that ended up being a three hour masterclass that we just put up for sale on the website. I think two days ago, and uh, and it's it's just great having this kind of way of uh, you know, making making your own videos now and and presenting things, and it's kind of emphasized a different dynamic of of what you can offer. Definitely, I mean, I've uh, I've actually got Masterclass three. I haven't got around to uh, watching the full thing yet, but I've sort of skimmed through the notes, which look uh, uh, ex exciting. It's sort of uh, putting that time aside now to uh, work through a lot of those exercises um i mean are you are you going to be doing any more master classes going forward as well yeah um the the master class three was uh based on based on half of my method book uh there's 120 pages that that you get when you buy the master class as, as you know thanks for for checking in with it and um so that that 120 pages is, is half of my book and i didn't really even get all the way through those 120 pages so i think i'll do uh at least another volume of uh guitar uh deep dive and um but the next master class is going to be about harmony and that'll be in the middle of uh of of january we're going to announce it pretty soon maybe at the end towards the end of january maybe third week of january we're going to announce it pretty soon, but it's going to be all about uh, harmony. And so that'll be the focus of that. Brilliant. I guess we can uh, we can call it a day there if you're uh, happy with that. But um, now thanks for joining us, uh, Kurt. And uh, also a big special thank you to uh, Tom for hopping on as a guest host. But, um, yeah, uh, perfect. Is there anything else that you'd like? Is there anything else I'll that you'd like recording. to say, Kurt? Oh, is there anything? <laughs> Uh, okay then. See you later. <laughs>